Hello lads. <laughs> Do you hope you're well? Um, I was watching the other day a video by that vegan lawyer, really good vegan YouTuber, and very unapologetic in her approach, which, especially these days, is something to be appreciated. I don't generally watch very much for the stuff I, I don't, it doesn't come up on my radar very much. We can blame the YouTube algorithm for that. But this came up on my recommended feed and yeah, it was about unnatural vegan. Um, and whew, it's so, 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 so good. I began my, uh, I don't, I can't really call it a relationship, <laughs> but I began my, um, attachment to unnatural vegan uh, quite negatively when I first met her um, I thought she was just a bit wishy-washy um, she would defend the wrong people um, and then I began to like her um, but I feel like I only you know, upon looking back, I only liked her because of the social pressure that people put on vegans. So I looked at her and thought, oh, you know, finally a vegan that doesn't reflect what other people view vegans to be. When really that's that's not the problem of the vegan, that's the problem of the people. That's the problem of their guilt associated with consuming animal products while claiming to be animal lovers. So, you know, I didn't actually like her message you know I still didn't like it and it, you know, even more so it's becoming a very frustrating position that she holds in my opinion she lacks a backbone in that sense to just say look this is wrong and stick to that I lost uh, my respect and I'm, this became very apparent to me when Swayze uh, turned around and defended Kalel for consuming animal products, coming out with this whole vegan-ish <laughs> like title. Um, oh no, that's that's another apologist, Tobias Lee, not uh, vegan-ish. I think she defended Kalel consuming some animal products, and and I'm pretty sure she even said that Kalel could still say she was still vegan, <laughs> even though when Charles Marlowe, a, a, a maybe equally or more so unlikable character uh, as a, in contrast to Kalel. Um, he did the exact same thing. He would purchase uh, ramen noodles and they had like a chicken packet in it and the chicken packet contained, it was either actual chicken or milk and he would just throw them away and he said, that's still vegan. You know, I'm just purchasing this brand. She turned around and said, that's not vegan. And I agreed with that position. But then somehow when it's it, it's Kalel's turn to do something like that, it now is vegan. And there's no clear kind of, oh, I used to think this, but now I think this. Because people change them, they do. They change their minds. Um, but, this is the problem with Swayze, like it's hard to know what she even believes, it's hard to know what she even stands for, it's hard to know what team she's on, um, but you would hope being a vegan she's on team animal and that doesn't seem to be the case. That vegan lawyer points out that, you know, unnatural vegan is still uh, perpetuating speciesism because she just does not talk about the animals as individuals she does not value them intrinsically she is taking a very uh, safe stance which is to be a vegan who's not like those vegans you know because she can then um, play to the vegans who want to be seen as nice, they're, they're, they're probably new to it, they're scared of looking like bad people, horrible people, because they're not bad people, they're not horrible people, so they go to who? They go to someone like her, who will diss on the militant vegans, who will separate um, you know, the militant vegans from them, so they can feel like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not them, I'm, I'm this kind of one, I'm one that a very moderate and fair apologist vegan sees as, as, as nice, and I used to take that stance, but I, I, I've, I'm now the belief you can still be a good person, um, if, if not more, by just having conviction in what it is that you're saying and defending those who it might not be popular to defend. I, I think we should look at this with foresight. We should look at what it will appear like when we, uh, we look back 
if we look back at history, I fully believe that we're going to stop consuming animal products. We're going to get to that point where the majority don't consume animal products. There will be a fringe of people who do, who can't let that go. Uh, as with anything else that causes harm to another sentient being, people will still probably do it. Um, I think that will happen and then we will look back and be kind of confused um, as we have been throughout uh, history and looking back at other things that have happened and think how could we have let this happen and we'll look at people like a natural vegan and think that they were really like snaky and inconsistent because um, she is she is playing a, a very safe role and I did think like that vegan lawyer says I did think there was a place for that 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 was helpful but I'm pretty sure it's not I don't I think you get further by polite politely being unapologetic in what you say in what you believe um and that is the best way to do it because any if if, if someone doesn't like the message that they're given they're going to see it as aggressive no matter how it's delivered so all you can really do is just stick by it you know be consistent and deliver it and i would still say do it in a in a polite way or a way that would match what would be best to appeal to somebody's elephant in that sense but i really hope that people like Unnatural Vegan are not the popular voices within the vegan community um, going forward. I know that her popularity is, is less so these days. She's still getting, you know, quite big views on her videos. And <laughs> the last I really heard of her was um, she was calling out the game changers and talking mad smack about it. When again, she just doesn't seem to know what she's talking about. <laughs> like It's so easy to be in a group and slag off that group using the stereotypes against it. Because the stereotypes that are used against a group are reflective of a vast minority of the people within that group. So, you know, it will be easy because you have that group, you have the, uh, the, the people within the group who are not like the stereotype and are desperate for people to see that, and then you have the rest of the world who views uh, the group in that way and is going to um, agree with what, say, our natural vegan saying. It's a really easy position to have. It's not easy, it's not like people might think, oh, it's, she's taking a positive stance because the vegans are so horrible. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, actually, no, then they're not. The uh, stereotypes that she uses are a minority of that group. They're a fringe in that group. Um, most vegans are just ordinary people who don't want to be tarnished with a brush um so they're gonna like side with with her because it's just like i'm not like that and people think i'm like that and i hate that <laughs> like um so i just hope that we grow uh, stronger in ourselves in our in our in our message because if you can't take your message seriously that you think animals should be intrinsically value, valued that they they um are deserving of their own lives free from our suff you know free from our hand in that sense um then why are other people going to believe it why are people who put their flesh in a sandwich going to believe what you say um people like her really don't draw attention to how valuable the life of an animal is they just make it seem like this thing that people can maybe do if they want to it's kind of up to them it doesn't really matter either way and that's incredibly frustrating and that's why i really like this video from that vegan lawyer you can go check it out link below in the description.